Okay, we're gonna move on to the dev letter then. That'll be the last thing we're gonna be talking about today. I appreciate you guys being patient here. So we're finishing with part two, and now we're gonna move on to part three. Part three is the dev letter that conveniently came out today, and that's what we're gonna be talking about right now. You certainly were not involved with it coming out today, I believe. No. What? Certainly not a coincidence it comes out on the day of your stream. Hmm? No! I didn't no, even know no. it was going to come out. No, no, trust me, Sarla. Trust me, there's already an investigation going in for Inyo. We're, we're seeing if he's involved with Planetside. I see, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm under internal affairs now. <laughs> and as the stream ends, Inyo turns away from the PC and puts on his pink bandana and takes off the face mask. I don't know why, but I would just picture Inyo being like Palpatine during the f prequels. He's... You know, one side he's like, oh yes, and then the other side you see him wearing the, uh, dark hood. I've been called many names, to say the least. I'm e I'm being called Inyo the Dodo, a teacher, among other things. Inyo the <laughs> Emperor. <laughs> I, I, we could make a list of nicknames so, to what I am. What would be the, what would be, what would be the one that stands out the most? Okay, here we go, guys. Part three. The dev letter that came out today. This one is called The Surf and Storm. You guys can read it, read this on your own time. We're gonna go part by part here? The Corsair. Let's talk about the Corsair. When I first saw this picture, I was thinking of Baywatch with guns. That's the first thing that came into my mind. When you said Corsair, I thought of the World War II aircraft. No, I not that one. And I'm like, oh wait, no, never mind. No. Think Baywatch with guns. I'm thinking it's a harasser of the sea. I think you might be right. I think but you might I be know, right. We think about its ability to spawn allies, and then I think, oh no, it's the ant of the seas. Underwater wow. access to tridents. We'll Did cover that in a moment. So, so for, for this Corsair, you yeah, can you have... Uh, Sarla was getting cut off. Go ahead, Sarla. Hey, yes. Reg oh, hey. hello, Bishop. Uh, regarding the boats, you gentlemen might not have read the entire thing, but it has a feature. The boat catapults people. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is this the medieval? Uh, is this the medieval yeah. times now, where you can catapult people? Oh wait, we've got it's platforms second, for that. It's the second paragraph, I, I mean, it, it looks kind of like a. A seafaring thunder, right? It's got two guns that you can do different weapon options on. There's and five. On apparently, this boat you can have five seats on it, so two gunners and a couple people can be inside. So it's kind of like can a harasser. I can I bring up Planet Side One? Go ahead. <laughs> Any Planet similarities? Right? Any Planet similarities for Planet Side One? Had, so you saw the old uh, thunder in Planet Side One. Yeah, yeah, we went through over that. Yes. Right. Yeah, so it had it had two or a large gun, a smaller gun that were kind of like lightning cannons, and it had two machine guns on the sides, and it could carry twelve people, and that's all it did. Um, the Sunder in Planet Side Two is actually based off of these Empire-specific five-man uh, transports. It's about the same size and same look as it, and they would carry five people: uh, a driver and four passengers, and two of the passengers would have guns, and they were amphibious. So this is the boat version of that. Yeah, if it's a, if it's a five-person transport with two guns that goes on the water, they had that in Plant Side One, but it looked like a Sunder because it was amphibious. Interesting. To me, the Corsair. Uh, I don't know. Does anyone here play Arma? Uh, I don't. I don't play Arma. Uh, what is, what so, is it? Go ahead. Let me take a picture. Copy a screenshot and I'll send it to you, Inio. Okay. It sort of reminds me of an assault boat they have on the game. Um, let me just do this and then paste. It sort of reminds me of that if you look at it. I, what stands out to me the most from this dev letter is this part right here. There's been never a naval vehicle in Planet Side 2. I'm not sure what in Planet Side 1, Bishop, but that's true. Planet Side 2 never has had a naval vehicle. So how they're going to implement it into Osher or the other continents is remains yet to be seen. And 
I'm I'm just wondering how this is going to work because there's going to be seaports for this. This is this could definitely make this could be a big game changer. So it's not just yeah, yeah about the seaports. Uh, it's mentioned you know, below. Evil genius, congratulations! Let's start another one right now. Okay, let's continue with the de dev letter. That that looks pretty cool, and and you can see the seats inside the thing. So there's two gunners, and there's the driver in the middle, and there's gonna be two two passengers on the back. If I uh, if I see that right, that's very cool. That's really really cool. Here, here's what. Here's the next thing that's very interesting. Oh, sure and under, where there's going to be bases you have to capture underwater. Yes, yes. That's going to be. Interesting. Wait, there's more. Take yeah. that, take that armor. Why can't you have battle underwater? Actually, they can. But you have to mod it. No. So, base game armor three. Certain guns will work underwater, and I've actually done... I've been part of Milsim groups, which we've actually done water assault uh, things, where we, we would sort of... We've actually done boarding uh, missions, where we board enemy uh, ships that have been taken over by pirates. We would actually board from using the anchor, and it was amazing. But that was modded, but the weapons we used were base. I saw. I just saw your picture now for the picture you sent me, Sherman, and I definitely de I see a similarity between the two pictures. I can definitely see a similarity there. It, def it definitely looks similar to that one you just saw. Compare this to that. It kind of. It does have some similarities. Definitely. Control boat's a control boat, right? <laughs> exactly. No matter exactly. what, they're going to use the same format for all patrol boats. Oh, um, sure. So under. Do you think that the uh, the back passengers will be like rumble seats so you could have heavies with rocket launchers? That is a very good question. That is a very I good question. The model showcase is clear that this will not be the case, especially with them being able to catapult. But gentlemen, I wish to divert your attention to another interesting fact. It is only written in text that there is going to be a new utility slot. There is going to be a small vehicle that will allow faster traversal underwater for infantry, which right now move at a snail's pace. So there is a smaller personal transportation vehicle that we have not yet seen. Water jets, all right. Yes. Wait. So probably a water jet. Wait, isn't that what the flash is already with the turbo? Well, perhaps the Flash could be seen as that, but this would be a more exclusive uh, vehicle, specifically for short distances underwater. Hey, okay, guys, so, I want you to read. I want you re to read this part here because this will interest some of you, and I have not seen this before. Here we go. Players will now be able to fight over underwater objectives and can now make use of many infantry weapons underwater. The majority, the majority of these underwater play spaces will surround sea posts, which have been revisited and increased in number throughout the map. Each sea post now has a spawn room and a smaller footprint overall. You can pull the Corsair, the boat, and other amphibious vehicles from the attached sea dock as well as air vehicles as usual. These new bases give you a staging ground to launch assaults on other bases and add much needed flexibility to Osher's lattice network. I, that's a very welcome change. Quite so, yes. More bases than lattice lines are just pretty yet. There yeah, are there, there are sea posts currently on Oshore, but they're not easy to attack without boats. So how do you attack them? Either by air or you get a sunder full of people on it. That's it. Yeah, from my opinion, uh, from my experience, I mean, from the sea post, they usually go uncontested uh, since we don't have any spawns on it, and the only real way you're getting there is when you go in a plane, you get dropped in it because if you go there by uh, see with your vehicle. Uh, for starters, your tanks cannot even go in there because it's floating. So anything that sinks cannot go there, and anything that's over water can easily be shut down by things from the other shore. Here, here's an interesting photo I want to show you guys. Control points and fighting underwater. Now you guys know in this game that your movement speed is obviously much slower, and and vehicles also go much slower. And they and and they they mentioned a specific fact right here that there's enough cover 
to encourage legitimate battles around these areas. That is very inter That's a very interesting po the statement they're making. How there's just enough cover. How how is that going to work when your movement speed is much slower in underwater? I'm very curious how that's going to work out in in the live server. Well, I expect it to be a meat grinder full of Zerks moving at a snail's pace, some circling around using the new vehicles that have not yet been shown. Uh, so we, we can only wait and see. Uh, I do not believe the gameplay style will deviate overall from the gameplay style that the core audience directed at Ocean's development enjoys. We need more rub. <laughs> One thing I will notice is, and it's also happening right now, is when we have people going over water with their vehicles, right? I have seen them all die miserably to the whales. Uh, there, here's an interesting point the developers just made here, and I want to read it to you guys. So the development insight that they write here is, quote, For the initial pass on underwater weapons, we've enabled most non-vehicle weapons that deal small arms, resist type 2, that damage to fire underwater. Mines, C4, and a handful of other deployables are available as well as medical applicators, ammo packages, and recon devices. Max suits can also fire underwater with their anti-infantry weapons, though repair tools cannot be used underwater. Now that is interesting. You cannot use your repair tools underwater. That's gonna be very interesting, especially if you're fighting for that post. What do you guys think of this? Yeah, that is a huge help that we're not gonna be limited to like three guns the whole time, which is nice. R.I.P. N.C. Maxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shotguns, yeah, yeah. Shotguns, slow moving shotguns underwater <laughs> hey uh, I guess we're gonna be mid shields the whole time with just a yeah. shield <laughs> uh, a guy in chat made a good point that uh, people that players can't just dive in the water from air repair and come back up there's a good that's a good that's a fair point so it's all about balance and I mean to be honest all the maxes will have to run out to repair or berserker in blunt if they have it to keep themselves afloat. And as mentioned, NC Maxes are ripped because we have no long range weapons and we only have shotguns, which, you know, are not I mean, gonna matter much when Elias is just gonna jet back into your face and see for you, right? And you, you, could argue, you could argue Gorgons or maybe even the uh, the Maddox uh, for medium range. And if there's, However, enough cover, if there's enough cover underwater, I think the Maddox might be usable. And the developers However, are aware. The developers also are aware. And uh, sorry to interrupt you, Dex, but the developers are aware of this because they say right here, quote, between these limitations, underwater combat spaces become a mostly infantry-centric combat space where angle of attack, self-sustain, and maneuverability have the most impact in the moment-to-moment -moment, instead of who has the bigger gun or force multiplier, end quote. I mean, uh, regarding the argument about the Matrox, it said uh, anti-infantry weapons, and I believe the Matrox is classified as anti-vehicle. Uh, so, you know. Is it really? <laughs> yes. It's, it's gonna come down to, uh, it's gonna come down to maneuverability on who gets the most damage, instead of who has the better gun or more force multiplier. I believe the light assaults are gonna be reigning supreme. I mean, their jetpacks work, and drifters is especially good. Wait, did anybody test oh, if the... I didn't even think about that. Wait, 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 did anybody test... Did anybody test on Osher if the Light Assault jetpacks work underwater? I don't think I ever did that. They do. They do. They make you move really fast. It's like, uh, if you use the Flash, if you use your Turbo, you move a lot faster. It's the same if you do it with, uh... Oh, boy. This is gonna be an absolute nightmare. Imagine, imagine a whole platoon of drifters coming towards the underwater point. Yeah, oh. Also, for reference, uh, infiltrators cannot cloak while underwater, so you know there is that. Oh, nice. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That that's yeah, gonna be very interesting. That's gonna be very interesting. How? So, in my the... opinion, it's gonna be fucking. Uh, excuse me, the language. Uh, it's gonna be light assaults and medics that will be showing their work. Yeah. Is this a, this is an adult stream. <laughs> it is, yes. I, dro I dropped the F-bomb earlier. <laughs> uh, TRD Red made a good point. TRD Red, a community member of mine, made a very good point about our community. Be mean, but don't be mean. That, that, that's a very, that's a very good way to put things here. And here's another interesting point I want to read you guys. 
and they say, quote, with this update, we're, we'll also be introducing a handheld underwater mobility device that is equipped in the tactical slot and is available for certification points. The first time we've done this, this device helps allay some concerns over the slower pace movement in underwater environments, provides more angle of attack options, and will help you get back to that vehicle you accidentally ejected from on the water surface. Now, this is going to be interesting for players that don't play light assault underwater. This could help out the combat medics in, in, during the heat of battle. This is going to be interesting to see how they're going to do this. Yeah, I'm seeing chat there. Yeah, yeah. if it's a... What type of slot is it? Tactical? That, it's going to be under tactical, yes. They don't, they don't mention what it is, but it's an ability that's going to help, uh, help allay the concerns of the slower pace movement when you're underwater. I mean, there are tactical slots that don't require you to actually pull them out and activate them, right? Um, nope. I th I'm trying to all think. Of like, the, all of them work. All the tactical you have to like deploy them. Is uh, the uh, like 50, 50 extra shield? Is that tactical or is that a different slot? That's a utility. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the tacticals we currently have in game is oh, the that's yeah. volume bomb, the, the pocket flash, the hard light, the ordnance damper, and the NE11 PML, which is for the drill mission. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's uh, all the uh, outfit merit point stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna message one of the community members here because the next bullet point we're gonna be talking here, um, he's gonna be interested in this. Hold on a second. I'm gonna message him right now. So if it's a utility slot, that means uh, I'm currently in game, so I can see that. So people are gonna sacrifice their mines, their uh, med tools. I mean the med kit. The... A uh, hard light barrier from the engineer, uh, all that kind of stuff. If that is a utility to use, uh, did, it, over, did it say utility or tactical? It says yeah, right here. Know. It says tactical slot. They so they they say they're gonna. It's gonna uh, be an underwater mobility device in the tactical slots, and it can be and it's available with certification points, so you can upgrade it so it becomes better. So, I, I think yeah, that's what it that's, says. That's, well, and I think the, the reference to it being the first time is specifically to the cert points, since uh, all the uh, other tacticals uh, are outfit merit points, right? Uh, uh, let, let me reread this one more yes, time. So that I'm not, they don't have upgrades. Uh, let me reread re reread this one more time. So we're not gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mess up on this. And I quote: "With this, uh, with the update, we'll also be introducing a handheld underwater mobility device that is equipped in the tactical slot and it is available for certification points. The first time we've done this." This device helps allay some concerns over the slower pace movement in underwater environments. That's the thing I want to read again, so you guys get that clearly. So it's a tactical slot ability that's going to help help uh, make the underwater gameplay be not as bad with the slow movement. It sounds it sounds good in paper. It sounds good. Five PC fans duct tape to your arms and legs. Mer merit slot stuff. Gotcha. There's also a possibility that it takes that tactical slot, but then functions like a jump jet, and so your spacebar just fires it off. Quite so, yes, that would be the most likely. In your, my apologies, but I shall retire for you. I mean, you gentlemen enjoy your conversation. It has been an absolute pleasure. Call me there's part two. Good night, Sarlo. Yeah, no worries. Nice at, to you. Uh, you gotta go, Sarlo. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, pleasure. Absolutely. Oh, all right, thank you so much, Sarlo. And the next thing we're gonna talk about, uh, Bishop, uh, are you? Um, how big is your outfit? Do you did you do outfit wars by any chance? I know. Uh, did you also do outfit wars, Dex? We, we don't do outfit wars. Uh, we've trimmed down our numbers over the past few years. Um, so it's it's been a while since we've you know, fielded like uh, an entire platoon of members or two platoons. So. I was hoping to get some outfit representatives to talk in for this next bullet point that we're going to be doing here, but yeah, I want to. But let's just do it anyway. See what you guys think of this. So, so outfit, uh, war, outfit wars re returns, and this time we're doing the one v one format instead of one v one v one. This is not. This is going to be very interesting how they're going to execute this. So if you guys don't know. Uh, the developers re teased a map back then, the Nexus Battle Island, that never got released until now. We don't have much to go on, only just by these, just by the teaser video that they back then and this quick photo that we have. This is going to be very there interesting. There's some description about that at the bottom. It's, it's, ice, it's some ice region. Uh, the other thing I want you to note is that uh, 
I don't remember if it was uh, on one of the other death notes. They were exploring the capability of allowing us to fight other outfit members. I mean, other other people in our own faction. So NC and NC could finally fight each other. That's and, the, that's what uh, they mentioned here. Yes. Yeah. This opens but up like, the as a, yeah. But like uh, as a permanent option. That is, I like that variety. So it's you're not just necessarily fighting against other factions. You're also fighting your own group. This is this is definitely going to be very interesting how this is going to be executed. And there's not a lot of detail to how the Alpha Wars is going to re-return because the last time Alpha Wars was done in a one v one v one format, you need to have forty eight players. And I can tell you right now. Not every outfit in this game is going to be able to get 48 people. Not unless you're a very large outfit or you got a lot of bodies in the outfit. So I was not part of the outfits that did participate, but it did allow them, I helped them find the members. Uh, for reference, uh, from, uh, I'm from the Continental Rangers, right? It was one of the largest outfits like uh, around last year. Uh, yeah. We were so big that uh, us opening the outfit members league would crash people. Don't the only thing that, that when to 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 help make the outfit wars a little bit more fun. I remember, I remember a couple of my outfit members, uh, a couple a couple people from several outfits in US East talk about alliances. Basically, give give outfits the ability to pair up with other outfits to play in for this one team against the other. Mm -hmm. I like that idea, but so far they have not mentioned this idea on this dev letter I, here. I believe they did mention it. It's on the roadmap, actually. Uh, Outfit Alliances. It's there on the roadmap. Uh, uh, oh, okay. But yeah, uh, back to the Outfit War story. So, uh, as I mentioned, I was hoping out because uh, on our outfit, uh, we are relatively free. We don't force people to do anything. So, we would simply hold the boat, like, how many would be interested in joining Outfit Wars, right? Yes. And we had a, roughly about 20 people who volunteered to answer that call. And throughout it was, uh, we wanted, if we're going, uh, our leadership uh, had the idea, like, if we're going to participate, it's going to be, we need to have at least 50 people, right? We're not going to make a bad show. So the other option was uh, people would go to other outfits and join theirs uh, because the others couldn't fill the whole roster themselves, right? Right. And there was this whole two to three months uh, of people preparing for it and saying, you know what, I we have 10 people, right? And they would go like, oh, we have 20. And uh, they would grab this other group of like 10 people so they could participate in. Which also brought their own share of troubles. Uh, I'm sure many in the community have uh, stories regarding that. But yeah, I did not participate myself, so I can't say how it all went down. We'll probably need to to get the appropriate people for part two, right? Oh, oh no, no. Uh, welcome to the show, Pebble. No, I was talking about that not every single outfit in the game can fill the full 50 players or 48 players. Not every group out there will be able to do so. But there, but going back to this whole talk about alliances that that i that i've heard a community talk about bring up to the pastorel was give the other office ability to join this team so that they think that they can pair up so that they have a chance to fight in outfit wars that's an interesting idea that i'm I, that's that was a major issue i remember that pretty well that that's some matches were very one-sided because there were not enough players there's not every group out there can fill the full 50 players not every group if there, if there were, if there were outfit wars matches where it was limited to twenty-four players or less, something along those lines, that could make things a little bit more interesting. I don't think it could. I don't think that outfit wars match is going to be interesting at twelve players. But if it was cut down in half to twenty-four, it it could be doable, and it's not going to yeah, be nearly as hectic. Yeah, we more participants if that was the case. But uh, forty-eight is indeed the right number. I mean, it's the full platoon. I will. I, I. I'm gonna guess that the dev team probably are aware of the design choices. They can. They're gonna go outfit wars this time around. The last time, like you remember, like you folks remember, it was 48 players that you needed. You needed 48, and not every group was able to do that. But what if? But with this one v one format, 
what if there was an option for for a tournament that you can have for one bracket it could be 48 players involved for one team or maybe you can have a lower end bracket where you need at least 24 players so instead of 48 you can have 24 which not is which is not going to be nearly as nearly as bad because like i said before not every group in this game can get 48 not every not every group so if you give those lower if you give these lower these mid-tier outfits or lower a chance to compete in this you can have you can definitely have a lot more replay value with this game because this is the only end game content this game has Oh yes, the alliances. The, the alliances is a very good idea, but but having the option of having outfit wars matches with much less players, that I I think that should be an option as well. If you're not interested in a 48 player, 48 48 versus 48 mat type of an outfit wars match, there should be a lower end l lower end of 24 players. So with the alliances in place. It will not be nearly as difficult I mean, don't to put people. That, uh, you could sign in without filling the roster, right? You could show up at 20 or 10, uh, however many you could uh, gather from the outfit, though. Really, so. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the fights it's... Fair. The fights yeah, but, yeah. And Pebble just made an interesting Pebble made an interesting point. So instead of the usual 48 versus 48, it could be 12 v it could be 12 v 12 or 24 versus 24. I think I, I it's just a theory, but I think what's more likely going to happen is it would be nice to have a 24 v 24 option. 12 v 12, I don't think it's going to be nearly as interesting to watch, but but the 24 v 24 does sound more feasible, even with alliances uh, turned on. That would be very nice. It's 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 an option because not every outfit in this game is law uh, not doesn't have enough players to commit into a very competitive end game. That's that's all I gotta say when it comes to outfit wars. I have never played outfit wars myself, but having the option, like I said many times already, forty eight versus forty eight and twenty four versus twenty four, even with alliances, I think that's the way to go. But we will see what happens when they share more information on it. But I can, I'm just, I, I, as a oh, planet, right. I... the guys on chat had a good point. The infantry leagues on Jaeger, the 6v6 format. That's V6, 6v6 on Jaeger. That, I never watched those myself. And I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how the 6v6 format is going to work for this type of a map because we don't have much information on what kind of a map they're going to be fighting in so i'm very optimistic to how that's going to uh, work out for here reference they fight in the regular maps like uh smir passing and so on nexus is a plant side one map that was tiny it was like a single point base map uh, based on these pictures bishop does it look like it's say it's the same or is it different um, I don't remember closely enough, but there, there, the Osher used to be called the Battle Islands, and it had four zones in it that you basically, like four miniature continents you went to, and each one was a smaller island, and Nexus was one of those. So that that does look familiar, but I want to say it was like a single mountain with mountain passages going up all around it, different sides, but that, that could be my memory. Um, uh, if, memory playing uh, tricks. Twenty Nexus has been around since 2015 game files, but they never re released it until now. I am looking forward to this, and I, this I, I'm predicting it will be either 48 versus 48, or it's going to be 24 versus 24. I'm gonna say uh, Azure Twilight and Blue Lions did a. Uh, our, we made up our own outfit wars because there we were down to only a handful of outfits playing the game at the end of it, and uh, we did that on Nexus, um, if I remember correctly. And so that was uh, one platoon versus one platoon back when platoons were 30 people. Yeah, but that's all into Planet Side 1 stuff. So, you yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a map that kind of lent itself towards that type of small play. I I have to agree with Pebble. Um, I have not seen Nexus myself. But I but but the fact that if the developers decide, if they announce that it's going to be tw uh, 24 versus 24... I think that there's going to be a better reception for that. 
it's 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 not going to be as hectic for this for the mid tier outfits. Think about it, if we compare the X's, they say they have what eight nine bases, I believe it says on the post. Nine base map is a nine base map. Okay, nine base map. Uh, I believe Cold Tier also had around nine bases. I no, don't they recall. Had, they had ten. They had ten. And yes, with over sixty people, that felt cramped. We'll just have to wait and see, but it, like, but if it's going to be twenty four versus twenty four, I, I I am going to be very interested to see how this is going to go because forty eight getting forty eight players is already very stressful enough for some of the outfits out there, and e, and this is without alliances, so this is going to be very interesting how this is going to turn out in the end, and we don't even know what the map looks like. I I think some people in the audience did say that it it was on the game files. But I don't really, I don't think anybody knows what the map is really going to be like. Maybe they made some changes since we, we last saw them game files. We just have to wait and see. But I honestly cannot wait to see how this is going to turn out. I don't know if my outfit especially is ever going to compete in this. Because I, I am not, I'm not very experienced with end game content. I'm more of a casual player. But for those outfits in this game that, that really want some competition... I think this is going to be a welcome addition that's sorely needed. Because there, there's really not much end game content in this game. There really isn't much. And speaking of Outfit Wars and its history, I still remember when the first version of Outfit Wars came. And it was not pretty. It burned out a couple of outfits very badly. I still remember that pretty well. Does anybody want to talk in, de does anybody want to talk in detail how bad that was? It went on for weeks. I I remember that. I thought and, they were exciting. Yep. And there was definitely that's, a controversy. That's, that's, that's from the watching viewpoint, though. Behind the scenes was a lot of drama, to say the least. Pebble, you nailed the hit, nailed the point in the head right there. Definitely, definitely some behind the scenes stuff. There was one match in particular that was quote unquote rigged. I remember that. I don't know where which server that happened, but that's another problem that, that the Outfit Wars had, and I think it got addressed. Connery, I remember that. The second the second match, the second time the Outfit Wars came, it was a bit better, but still had some quite it still had some issues to fix. It was not nearly as bad as the first one. What do you guys think of Outfit Wars? Did you, did you what what issues did you remember about the outfit wars and what do you think is better? I'm back. Sorry. Welcome back. It one v one v one was uh, was a uh, what was fun to play, but when it comes to doing it over and over and over again, I I don't think it I don't think it's gonna keep people interested. But with this new map with one v one format with twenty four players, that will be interesting. Ima the best, imagine the best part about it would be if it's like available for us though. like uh let's say in the weekends we could go to the outfit menu and go hey can you, you can challenge this other outfit and they can accept and we can get our if... own like schedule right and say hey we can, we're gonna fight this 24 24 24 versus 24 I think is the way to go. I'm not sure that it's, it, this is what the developers are going to be announcing, but I believe that's going to be the right step in the right direction. And it's not going to burn out nearly as much players because you can shuffle out players. So it's not going to burn out. It's not, not going to burn out the outfit nearly as much. So if, if, if Outweigh Wars is going to become a semi-monthly thing, for example, you can have players rotate and it doesn't require nearly as much for, for 24 players compared to 48 players that's it's all it's all it's about it's about balancing and i think that i if that developers are going to go that route i think that's going to be a very good good idea in my opinion even with alliances becoming a thing like other outfits joining together for a match i still i still believe 24 players is enough not too little and not too much It's enough. I have to agree with that, Pibble. Like I said, 48 players is asking way too much. Way too much. So you can have, a, so you can have at least two squads. 
that has to work together. And that's why you got those little fire teams, so you can split these people and they will work together to hold this one point if you have to poke. That's where the fire teams come to play with these two squads. That's going to be very interesting. Because one squad has 12 players and the second squad has another 12 players, so it becomes 24. That's why 24-24 is probably going to become a thing. I hope. This game really needs endgame content. It's not a fair comparison to say to compare this game to say World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy because they're different genres. But there needs to be endgame content for this game to to become to become popular or interesting to say the least. There, no, this is my opinion for you guys. The content alerts you guys that do that people do operations for each week. They're nice, but even you got to admit that it's gonna uh, become too repetitive if there's nothing else to do. You can do meme ops. I've heard. I've heard you can do meme ops, uh, partisan operations. If that's a thing, it can only, it only go so far. So when you give players more options, it's not going to be nearly as repetitive. It's so it, it, you. It's uh, there's only so much you can do to make the alerts interesting. And that's why I, I cannot wait for Outfit Wars to come back. And I think they were. I think they're going to nail it on the head this time. I, ca I cannot wait to see what would, they have I, in store. I would prefer having the other anomalies come in instead of the regular alert as well. But you know. Yes, that's another <laughs> thing when I mention air anomalies. I I remember what they were like back in the day, and it turns out they're still bugged. Hopefully they fix that. Hopefully they'll fix that. And I don't. I don't know if they're gonna. Uh, does anybody here remember Maximum Pressure? Does anybody remember that? No? Does, anybody here, does nobody here remembers Maximum Pressure? It's where you can get free maxes? No? That's a thing. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. Everybody got free maxes and it was uh, whichever empire got the most max kills in a certain time limit. So, maxes were free and you kill... Like, obviously, if they're free, you can just pull them and get a bunch of kills. But the score was actually based off the number of maxes you killed. That was fun. I don't know if they'll bring that back, that but... Fun. I don't know if they're going to bring that back. But it'll be interesting to see how they're going to add that during an alert event. Imagine a maximum pressure during an alert itself. That would be interesting if it, if it limited right. <laughs> uh, that That's going to be very interesting, though, because... There should be an RNG with maximum pressure or aerial anomalies. It could be, it should be done either in the beginning of it or in the middle, but definitely not during the end. So it does not become, so it does not become too much out of balance. What do you guys think? I mean, taking into reference what we had recently with uh, air anomalies, we had those right before the alert started. That's what, that's what I think. That, that was a need, uh, in my opinion, like, change of pace. Yeah, just anything to shake up a bit, check up the meta just a little bit. If, even if it's not much, say, I don't know, the first 15 minutes of the alert, it's going to be air anomalies. And then after that's done, how about another 15 minutes where it's maximum pressure? It's, not, it's, it's a little different, but it's definitely less repetitive. That's that's what I'm thinking right now from the top of my head. So when an alert starts, there's going to be another event that will happen immediately. So it could be maximum pressure or air anomalies. Yeah, that would be nice. That would get more and more in rotation. Yeah, I don't. I still. I don't think putting air anomalies or maximum pressure during after the mid part of the alert is a good idea. I think putting them yeah, at the beginning is better. A lot of people will ignore it to get the territory control. Uh, on the control uh, but honestly having 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 the, those either those two events happen at happen before the mid phase of the alert I th is it's gonna be a welcome change if they ever decide to do that 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 will be that will be so much better than what we have now just a little bit of variety that's all we need game and let's talk about the beyond the horizon they talked about this year's roadmap. This is going to be the last thing we're going to be talking about. I appreciate you guys being patient here with me today. 
they so they got so they got plans to bring the outfit force back between May and August. They're on schedule. One of their combat expansion, they talked about that. The first naval vehicle, yeah, they did item gifting. What they didn't talk about yet is the squad system revisited. Usability, quality of life pass, squad abilities, and temporary local area squads. That they have not can talked you, about that one yet. Can you, can you bring up the uh, roadmap image? I already got it right now. They have not talked about the temporary local air squads yet. They have yet to bring that up. What I'm really looking forward to later this year is the war asset updates, alliances, which they did mention. Uh, uh, they we did it did mention, but it doesn't look like they're going to make it for Alpha Wars. Well, this yeah, from what you see, you see on the roadmap, uh, the only thing we're missing for the this cycle is the squad system because I think if then it's now live and it's working properly, the water combat the first naval got announced as uh Alpha Wars did, so it's pretty good. I mean, they, they've been on track. I, I'm looking, I am very interested to know what they're going to be releasing at the end of the year. Because that is a lot of redaction. If, it, if it's the, the retweak back to the uh, settings, it looks beautiful. Oh. It's just speculation. But if they do, but when, if they do get the, all of these done, like they say on the roadmap, especially with this temporary look, okay, here's the thing, the temporary local area squads. Now that's an interesting idea by itself. I don't know how they're going to implement it. If you are already in a squad platoon yourself, but this, this could work for people that are not currently in a squad or a platoon. We just have to wait and see how that's going to be implemented. That's going to be, that's something to look forward to. First naval vehicle that they already talked about today. <laughs> I am very curious how this Corsair is going to work in game. How how well are the controls? What is the survivability of that boat? Is it going to be like a harasser on water? We'll have to wait and see. I mean, I mean right now it's better to think of it as an ant. Uh, you may not know this, but the ant is actually quite speedy, especially if you have cordium. Uh, you can actually keep up with a harasser uh, speed-wise, and you can actually beat them because if you have a full Corium tank, well, your turbo is going to last much, much longer than a harasser. The catapult function makes it viable with the cliffs. That's exactly right what they mentioned here, because they did mention, they did mention about that. Especially for certain areas of the, of the ocean map where you have to climb high cliffs. Imagine coming a base. Imagine striking a base with with this naval vehicle, and you can send a couple people ahead just to capture. That's gonna be fun. As long as the catapult is strong enough to put somebody from the sea all the way to the trident, now that. I don't know if the cat. I don't know if the catapult for this boat is going to be enough to get into a trident. That's that is going to be very interesting. I think. My, my, my guess is that the catapult for this boat is enough to climb cliffs that you see on this map right here. Let's think uh, the cliff around Viridian, Viridian, I would say. That's our relatively big. I think that's what the, I think that's what the developers were teasing on is bring boats into this continent so that there is an well, incentive to have we, boats. We don't need to speculate much. Since you know they're gonna bring it to PTS uh, in the next cycle. Before this uh, announcement came in, I think some people in the community were guessing that this was happening before the roadmap was even revealed. I don't, I I can't wait for this thing to be in. Imagine, imagine for a second that this boat, the Corsair, was able to be used in Outfit Wars. Can you imagine how fun that would be? That would be interesting. That would really, really shake up the outfit wars meta. Underwater trident access. That that's not a thing in the game, is there? I don't think I saw that in the announcement. So you enter a teleporter underwater for the to get on the, to the top level the trident. I don't think I it saw could that. Also be a really big jump pad that they're gonna modify later, which would also be nice. 
again, we'll just have to wait and see. I don't think I saw that in the announcements. They did mention they did mention on the roadmap and on the announcement live streams they did a while back that they are going to modify Osher to make it more fun. There's the addition of the boats and who knows what else they're going to change because they did went back to the current continents we have right now and they finally added some new lattice links for the other bases. So who knows what else they're going to be doing? Somebody mentioned it. Hmm. I don't recall right away on that. So we'll just have to wait and see. Because I because I don't want to be wrong on this. And we'll just have to wait until they we'll just have to wait until they introduce the play test that's coming up soon. So 25th is coming up this weekend. And we'll we, we will see what they've changed. They're gonna be releasing the patch notes and we'll check them out on our own time. Wow, four hour show today, guys. What what an interesting turnout we had today. And it's kind of it, it's been an interesting ride. Bishop, uh I think the highlights for the today's show was Bishop, because you help fill in the hole for Planet Side One, because I don't think anybody I don't think a lot of people in this community stepped forward to talk about Planet Side One. So I'm very happy Bishop turned out today. In just one hour or so, you summarized it pretty well. Thank you. And I'll be. I and know, I, I didn't know how that was going to go, so I, I, I'm glad that it was useful. <laughs> I I think, like I said earlier, Bishop, when I did not interrupt you when you were speaking, and I only chimed in when it was necessary. I think that's what made it even better. And I was just going through the footage of what you sent me, and that worked out pretty well. That you can just look at my stream and say, "Hey, let's talk about that." I think that went very, that went much better than I thought it would be. And and what's interesting is that there wasn't a whole lot of pre-planning. We were mostly winging this whole thing tonight. Can you believe that? The, the, the passion job. is amazing. Sorry, what did you say, Dex? The passion uh, really came out and made this amazing. Exactly. And I, I'm going to be honest, this planet side 2 bit that we just, just did now, it could have been better if we had more people that knew the history a little bit more. But we did what we could. We did touch briefly on some of the things that stood out more or less. But honestly, this is the best we can do. And we just had to we just had to give you guys as much information as I could. To summarize, Planet Side 2 has had a long history, obviously. Some missteps along the way with one bad base. How the, how the updates were stagnant until EG7 came along and finally they gave them the resources that they need so they don't have a skeleton crew. That explains why the updates were much faster since 2019 came along. That's why you saw Shadow Warpgate came out, Escalation, and finally the Arsenal update. I don't recall the Arsenal, I don't recall this game having any weapons updates in years where they updated the values for certain weapons in a long time. That was very that was a nice welcome addition and i and outfit wars being a big hit and miss that's another that's another thing that we already talked about and i'm but i'm just glad that they did not give up on that concept and they just continued to experiment and i and i hope that they will finally get it into a formula that's going to work the developers definitely were reluctant to do a 1v1 format even though the community said constantly, we need a 1v1 format. But I'm glad we at, at least we saw 1v1v1 happen. Maybe it could be a rare event when 1v1v1 happens. And if 1v1v1 is going to return, it should be 24 versus 24 versus 24. That way, it's not going to put a big strain on outfits to, just to get enough people to participate in that. Because 48 is simply too much to ask for most outfits. Somebody's going to burn out eventually. 24 seems to be the magic number, I think. Other than Outfit Wars, Osher finally came. Whether you guys like Osher or not, I am happy that it's here because there's variety that this game def desperately needed. Hassan and Imersh and the other yeah. continents, there's nothing wrong with them, but we definitely need more variety in this game.
and if same faction combat works, you could have more than three teams. Another good point, Evil Genius. Another good point. Underwater combat. Not a new thing in video games, but I'm glad it's finally here. I'm surprised that they did not introduce this in the game years ago. Probably because this game suffered bad management from the, from the, from the sound of it. There, there was even a skeleton crew at one point. So I'm glad that EG7 came along and gave them the resources that they needed. That's why the communication got so much better. Well, I, yeah, I, I think with uh, Plant Side 2, what happened was they uh, they released the, the game engine on some experimental technology to make it the newest, bestest thing. And it was plagued with server issues. And so the population was massive, you know, just uh, you can look at the population history stats and the servers couldn't keep up with it. And it took them a year and a half to correct that. And so that loses a lot of the, uh, a lot of the momentum and uh, the, the population, the users to support spending the money. And that's, it got taken down to a skeleton crew. Um, did you guys talk about Plantside Arena at all? We were just about to no, touch on that, Bishop. We were just about to we touch on that, Bishop. To I was just about to get into that. Another big misstep that happened was they thought Planetside Area was going to become a thing. Unfortunately, it came in way too late when PUBG and all the other games already existed on that. And nobody, and it, ca nobody cared about it enough. And well, I, I, I don't want to blame them on that because Planetside Arena was in alpha and I played it and it was fun. But the issue was is they released it in alpha and a month later they were going to you know fix some stuff and tweak it and then release it. And Apex Legends dropped with, um, I don't... And, I, mean, I don't know if you guys were paying attention when Apex Legends dropped, but they dropped that the same day it was announced. They did zero marketing ahead of time. Nobody knew the game was coming out. And it was this huge gamble that they did because they spent millions getting non-disclosure agreements with the biggest streamers out there to all play it to create this huge hype about the. I was like, oh, there's this new game out. No one knew it was coming out. And all these, uh, the biggest streamers there are were playing it for money with non-disclosure agreements and it generated this hype and you had 50 million players in the first month and anybody who was trying to make a battle arena at that point those products are done and that's exactly what happened to Plantside Arena they had this good thing that they were working on they were having us play test it and stuff and then Apex Legends happened <laughs> unfortunate timing Unfortunately. The worst part about it, in my opinion, is the fact that it got scrapped, right? If it was somehow added into here as a mode we could access for Sanctuary or something... I'm like, it, sure. it, it was a fun game. It, it, you know, and it was alpha, so there were some issues with it. But when you had a full lobby, and I never, I never didn't get a full lobby because it was made to play 300 players with 12-person squads. There's no, plan there's no uh, Battle Royale out there that plays 12-person teams. Like, they were trying to pull another planet-side massive thing, like the original franchise and Planet Side 2 are. Um, and I think they could have executed it if it wasn't for the timing of Apex Legends. So, like, Pla yeah. I'm pulling up Planet Side Arena right now, just for the record, if anybody watches this uh, VOD later. Planet Side Arena, this was the logo that they first released. There's Bastion. And let's look up some gameplay if there's any footage at all. Remember Planet Side Arena? I played it. You played it? Yeah, I have it in my Steam library. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't Planet Side. It wasn't Planet Side, but it was good. Yeah. I'm just loading up some honest, footage. To be honest, I think Fortnite may have taken a book out of it because before they didn't have vehicles, and I'm pretty sure Planet Side Arena had them. Yeah. Yeah. So I bet I guarantee you they probably looked at this game and said, "Yeah, let's add vehicles." Um, I, when it comes to gameplay, I can't really judge on it because I never got the chance to play it. I'm just uh, looking. So, yeah. It, how it played was is you had an engine. You only had three classes: engineer, heavy, or medic. But all of them had jump jets, and it had kind of the graphics were kind of in between Planet Side's realism and uh, like Borderlands. So it had that. That, that posterization kind of comic feel to it. Um, they definitely needed to work on the gear. The gear was basically just uh, yeah. pick, pick it up by color, and that's all you were interested in with what color it was. 
And it and because it was meant to be played with 300 people in most lobbies, you were lucky if you got 100. There was more gear than you could ever know what to do with, so everybody was fully upgraded by the time you actually fought somebody. <laughs> I'm just, um, uh, yeah, I'm playing the gameplay footage right now for Planetside Arena. It looks like Planetside 2, but in third person. Just like every other Battle Royale game out there. Definitely had promise. You have 12 player, 12 person teams. It, it was a lot of fun. It was a good game. It's just Apex had to come along and swipe everyone. If this game had come out and Apex Legends did not exist, I think they would have had a chance. Oh, this game came out before Apex. Apex wouldn't have won. It could have. Yeah, it was just unfortunate I'm timing on their part. It was not, just. No, I'm not. I'm not an Apex hater either, and I know. Uh, and you know, you play Apex. Like it's. Uh, I Apex just play... a great game. It just happened to kill Plantside's third game. <laughs> I, I I only started playing Apex Legends recently. I yeah, was... no, Apex is a great game. There's a reason why it, it became king of the king of the hill. Uh, well, Bishop, if you ever want to play Apex, Valorant, or any other games with me, I will try to do those more. It's just that I currently got three video projects to do, along with this one that I need to, need to put together. Um, I'm not into big battle royale games. I mean, I'm sure you guys all know uh, Battlefield's Firestorm. I don't think I know that one too well. I uh, played that, that briefly. <laughs> that, that was a train wreck. Yeah. You want to talk about bad free-for-alls? That was a train wreck. To me, bat Firestorm was basically, hey, Call of Duty has the new free-for-all. Why don't we hop on this hype train and try and copy them? Yeah, this... It's a shame this game didn't become a thing. It would it would have had a possibility. It could it would have made things a bit more interesting. Yeah, definitely. It looked like they did put a lot of heart and soul into it. It's oh, for sure. It it had a lot of heart and soul. And it and it, and it looked like the graphics were improved, especially since I think they're on a different engine at this point. Yeah, it, it was a different engine. Yeah. A shame that they could not carry Planetside 2 over with these with this engine. It would have been so nice that they could fix all the optimization issues. And look at the vehicles burning. That doesn't happen in Planetside 2 at all. They just disappear as soon as they get destroyed. No, the, the people have been flames a bit. Oh, yeah, uh, they, I'm not watching they, do go, they do go up in flames. No, no, I mean it gets destroyed is on fire for a bit and finally disappears. But in Planet Side 2, yeah. it instantly disappears. And the circle gets smaller and smaller. And you get the, and you get this end result screen. Uh, you finally get killed by someone. And you get a match time. Defeat. Definitely had, had the potential. Planet Side Radio definitely had the potential to be... The next big thing, I mean, but I'm, I'm at least happy we got the javelin from it because those things are fun to pilot. Yeah, they are. And look at the models. Look at the look at the player models here. They look they look amazing. What, what was the what was the gameplay? What was the performance like in this game when you guys played it? I, what was I, it like? I didn't have any performance issues. It was fun, and I'm not playing on a top uh, tier rig either. It you got constant sixty plus FPS. Uh, 60 plus, yeah, easily. Yeah, nice. Easily. It had good performance. Did you enable potato mode? I do not, no. I do I'm... on Planet Side 2. I did not on Arena. But it's a lot to say. Wow. What a long show this has been, guys. Um. So... <laughs> We started, I started putting this idea of a show two weeks ago. I tried to get as many people as I could. Um, I did not go into each, I did not go to each outfit Discord, just get the word out. Thank you so much for that, Evil Genius. Thank you so much for that. And I think this will be the second time I'm going to be mentioning this, and mentioning this. But if you guys ever wish to support the show, you guys get rewards like Twitch subs, like these ones you guys get to use. I think if I think with more support, I can do probably do more of these in the future. I've come a long way, and if you guys go to my YouTube, I did podcasts like this in the past, 
but honestly it was a lot rougher and it was left to be desired honestly but on but today it was a big improvement compared to what i did in the past whoa, whoa, hold on a second let's do hold on a second uh, honestly um when it comes to my side the whole franchise as a whole I still play it casually to this day. I would have loved to have tried Planetside Arena, but at the time when it, when this whole game got released, I could not even play it because I was on an older computer. It's a shame I couldn't get the chance to play it. It would have been nice. It looks so promising. But at least we got Planetside 2, even though it's... It, 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 feels, it feels kind of sad that... You cannot just carry Planetside 2 over to this engine that Planetside Arena had. Because it looks it look it performs so much better. It's a shame that they they lost all all of those resources and they had to throw away all that hard work. Well, I think part of it is um they uh they went down to bare bones developers and those were like second generation developers of the game too and so they have a ton of code that they had to like spend months reverse engineering to figure out how their game engine even works like there's been a lot of backpedaling going we don't mess with this piece because we don't know how it works <laughs> it's essentially i don't know how this works i don't know how this works i somewhat know how this works so we're gonna stay off this 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 uh, but despite despite the ups and downs this planet this planet side franchise had, I think I think it has a chance to come back and regain its former glory. I think they do, and with Unreal Engine five and and uh, with Unreal Engine five coming out now and technology getting better, who knows? I think I think that I think planet side is just I think planet side has a chance to get back into its former glory. I don't know if they're even. For sure. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't even know. This could be a crazy theory, but they could grab the code that they have a Planetside Arena and make a sequel to as to Planetside Three because this looks already looks pretty good. This gameplay looks really nice. The only reason I wouldn't want that is because I really don't want to lose my progress. <sighs> but yeah. I, I think I think Planetside Three should use this engine, and they and they don't have I don't have to start necessarily from scratch. Wait, you're not on your seventh character already? No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I'm on my, like, third. Actually, no, I, I have only made three characters so far. Where I think... I think... From 2000-something, and... I think... C and my current... Uh, I think... I think that's one way to wrap things up for today. Um... Well, there is, so that wraps up today's show, but before we wrap things up, I think I have this one game that we can do that it's not, doesn't require too much effort, but I'm not sure if you guys are interested in it because I have to switch voice channels for this. I'm not, I'm not sure why, if we should why do that. Why do I feel like this is uh, Jackbox? That's what I was thinking. But I'm not too sure if we should do it for this time around because I know it's it's getting pretty late for most of us now. It was a lot of fun talking about this, and I don't know if the I I did reach out to the developers that we're doing this event today. I'm not sure if they were going to make a visit, but I just but I wanted to get as much of our opinion out there just for them. And but I still hope that you guys enjoy this lovely little show of ours. Bishop definitely was the biggest standout of today's show when it comes to talking about Planetside 1 and helping fill in the gaps for just for Planetside 2 alone. And I wish I wish that the guest of yours would have made it, Bishop. I really I really wish they could have. It would have helped. Uh, <laughs> he called he called me when I, uh, when I left the for the after the first segment and uh w was happy with it, you know what he saw, so he he, he did watch the entire that entire bit. Oh, I'm so happy he did. I'm so happy that he did, and I'm glad. And I'm glad that you got your. I'm and I'm glad you had your chance to talk about it. I you did definitely struggle a bit, but I'm glad I was your wingman for that. It's like we were doing talking points in Jockbox, except that I was not screwing you over. 
If you ever did, if you if you ever play talking points on Jackbox, you know what I'm talking about. That's a lot of fun. Also, I'm very thirsty right now. I'm definitely not sponsored by Pepsi or Coca Cola. <laughs> Well, just drink some actual water then. Maybe I am out of water. I am out of water right now. What a bad host, not to care. Shake my head. I've already. I don't. I, it's been four hours. <laughs> it's been four hours. What do you want me to do? I need to. I need to bring an army of water then. An army of water. Wait. Wait. You don't have your your stack of like cans. Your army room? of you water. Wait a minute. I think I'm giving the developers too many ideas. An army of water. An army of water. Okay, I'm gonna. I had said it before and I'll say it again. If Planetside 2 can get like an instance where we go into Planetside Arena, I would play the shit out of it. I would too. I would play this game if this it, it was ever done. And by the way, and by the way, Evil Genius, thank you so much for coming in. We're just about to wrap things up here. And uh, I think. Wait a minute. I think should should we raid somebody just for the fun of it? Because I was gonna sure. do some other games later, but actually, you know what? I need, I got video editing to do. I have video editing to do because I already got this. I got this show to do. I have an Apex Legends video That'd to be edit. Fine. It's only four hours of content. You're gonna get that done in like a day, right? right? I have. I look. I have an Apex Legends video to edit that I still haven't had the chance to touch. What else? Apex. Hold on, I'm checking my hard drive right now. I just want to show you guys what I have to do. Yeah, why not? Uh, no need to flex on the I'm not flexing, I'm just disclosing. Uh, screen. Thank you. I'm just showing. I, I, have, no. <laughs> I, I, I I'm just going to tease you guys. I have an Apex Legends video to edit where I won a match without eyeglasses. Spoiler alert. And Squad where we basically destroyed vehicles and killed some infantry for fun. The highlight that's going to be another interesting highlight video and another goose goose duck video guys news flash for you guys if you like among us well goose goose duck is better and it's free give it a try that's all i gotta say and i think wait a minute let me let me let me look let's see if anybody is on let's see if anybody's on this game right now uh does anybody is there anybody that i recognize is there anybody I recognize in Planet let me, let me see. I don't recognize anybody here. Oh! Wait a minute. I recognize this one player here. I recognize right, this player. A, there's a polo. From, I recognize uh, from this one player here. I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, there's Morpheus as well. He's uh, so, been here recently. So for you guys, for so hey guys, if you are Twitch subber to me, let's some spam some emotes to, to, to this person. Let's spam some emotes. Before we do the raid, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on to, to be on my show today. Like I said already, the Planet Side 2 bit, which is part 2 of this whole show, it could have been better, but we but it was the best we could depend, with, the, with, the, with the limited amount of people we had. And the dev letter I, I was a lot better. Oh, Seed Stang, thank you so much. I, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this little show here. And before I wrap things up, if you guys ever wish to support the show, you can do it in a couple ways. There's the Patreon. You can become a tier one Twitch subber. Got these cool, these cool sub emotes you guys can use if you ever wish to do that. You can use that everywhere. Finally, got some new channel point bits. Like, actually, you know what? I forgot. I haven't done a channel points bit in a while. We need to do this for you, the audience. Let's give a round of applause for our audience here for being a love for being a, for being a nice crowd tonight. Let's give a round of applause for the audience tonight. I wish I I will, I will try to do more siege, but there's a reason why these podcasts don't happen very often. Uh, it has to be fun for a good reason, and there is need to be, there's needs to be enough stuff to talk about. I, uh, here's an interesting part. Here's an interesting fact for you guys that are still watching. Winter gaming. Sounded interested to be here with us tonight, but they could not make it. I did not hear any word from Commander Sirius or Kamikaze. Looks like they were also busy as well. Winter and... Gaming, uh, that's a pretty solid group from what I remember of them. 
Yeah, I, I was talking to the Emerald Discord and I did not get a word. I did not, uh, apparently they couldn't make it. I have access to a lot of other outfits Discord as well, but I just focused on one Discord in particular because I have a very busy schedule. I should have contacted as many people as I could, but I had a busy schedule. But it, but even with this turnout, I still think it turned out pretty good. I honestly don't know how this show today turned out, but I'm glad it's a whole lot better than I what I did l last year. Hey, hey, I'm here because I appreciate people making content about Planet Side and uh, you, you know getting it out there for people to watch. You know, if if 50 people in the next month uh, see your YouTube video, or 50, you know, 5,000, whatever the number ends up being, you know that you know that's some potential new players that come check it out and if, if even, even one thing we can do to get people to check mm -hmm. it out you know, even if, if 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 even one person like what they saw here today that alone is a good thing for me if if even one person was happy i'm very happy with that too well but... I'm, I'm i'm pumped that you showed me the dev letter because i i hadn't seen that and I did I'm, not read I'm it. I'm about some amphibious combat. That sounds fun. I did not read that at all, but I'm glad the developers have continued to bring in more stuff to this game that it really that they desperately needs. There's but, one thing I'm I would quite... love. Yes. Oh, go ahead. I no, was you go, say, I'm quite oh. happy I read it when it came out because I've been playing Planet Side while we were talking the whole time, <laughs> and I did not have time to read it while I was shooting stuff. So, uh, there's one, uh, there's yes. one, uh, uh, go. sorry, Inya, go ahead. No, 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 please, you go, Sherman. So, there's one thing I would love to see them try and do, is maybe add in some bigger ships besides the Corsair. Like, maybe a submarine for when we have to do underwater capture points. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then maybe like a destroyer type ship with uh, heavy cannons that can put up AA. You know what I mean? I I can definitely see that happening. I would love to see those as well, but you know, baby steps, buddy. That, that, steps. That, that, that's what they're doing with the Corsair. They're testing the waters right now first, just to, just to see how that goes. Ah, the... smooth pond there, I see. Yeah, but... but... Look at the engine that Planetside Arena has compared to Planetside 2. Planetside 2 is a lot more difficult to work with from the sound of things. And Planetside Arena looks much better by comparison. It's a shame that they could not transfer all the content to this engine instead, just to work on it. But I'm, but I'm glad we still have a game to play. I'm just glad. It's a shame we never got this game. It's a shame I couldn't even get a chance to try it.